discussing about eligibility of the candidate for accepting devotional service. So he started it on account of his association with Mahatma for grades of 100% engaging devotional service of the Lord. So how we discuss how people person get others the so the Agya Sukuruti and then you know, attraction then other Sadda. Okay. So at the same time, one person you know, uh, may attach to putty activities, material sense, and you may not be prepared to undergo different type of renunciation. So such a person, if he has unconscious attraction to Krishna, become an eligible candidate for discharge and devotion service. So we had seen uh, from uh, Bhagavad Gita, different different verses that uh, how you know uh, becoming a devotee is very very rare. So uh, anyway, I'm not going to discuss that again. So the, and how it is great fortune that also we discuss. Okay? Sometime we discuss about four symptoms of good fortune. Okay, so. It is confirmed by Lord Chaitanya that only fortunate person by the mercy of born of a Krishna, uh, born of a spiritual wife in Krishna will get seed of devotional service. Brahmande Bhamiti, Kona Bhagyavanji, Guru Krishna, Kasarita, Bhakti Ratavi. And even that is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam. My dear Uddha, only by exceptional fortune does someone become attracted to me. And even if become attracted, one is not completely detached from fruitive activity, or is not attached to devotion, such a person is quickly such a service is quickly effective. So then we started with what are the advancement, what are the different level of advancement in devotion service? We started with that. Okay. So So these are the different level of uh, advancement for devotee. So is Kanishka is lowest, Madhyama then Uttama Dikari. So Kanishka has big faith. <coughs> then knowledge is weak, cannot offer argument to opposing opinion. Madhyama is convinced, uh, has a good knowledge but cannot. Always defeat opposing opinion. Uttama, the faith is strong and convinced. Knowledge strong can convince opposing opinion. So, as per the Chitana Charitamata Sadda, Sabje, Viswasa, Kahe, Sudar, and Shri, Krishna Bhakti Kaila, Sarva Krita Hoi. So, Sraddha is a confident, firm faith that my rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna. Or automatically perform subsidiary activity. Such a faith is favorable to the discharge of devotional service. So faith means conviction that the goal of life is to please Krishna and abandon all other desires. So Sila Prabhupada gives a nice example in Chaitanya Sarkam that uh, he gives the example from example in nectar of instruction. That uh, what is the faith form? The verse number three. Can anyone remember what is the analogy? So, what you about the girl, woman uh, wanting the child? So that example, so what you.
So, Prabhupada says the activities of devotional service must be executed with patience. Patience, one should not be impatient in Krishna consciousness. Indeed, this Krishna conscious movement was started single handedly. In the beginning, there was no response. But because we continue to execute devotional service, execute our devotional activities with patience, people gradually began to understand the importance of this movement. Now they are eagerly practicing. One should not be impatient in discharging devotional service, but should take instruction from the spiritual master and execute them with the patience, depending on the mercy of Guru and Krishna. So the successful execution of Krishna consciousness activity requires both patience and confidence. Confidence is very, very important. Faith. So what is that faith? So Prabhupada gave a nice analogy. You should remember this. So newly married girl naturally expects offspring from her husband, but she cannot expect to have them immediately after marriage. Of course, as soon as she is married, she can attempt to get a child, but she must surrender to husband. Of course, right? She has to surrender to her husband and confident that her child will develop and be born in due time. Similarly, in devotional service, Surrender, surrender means that one has to become confident. The devotee thinks, our share after you be Krishna. Krishna will surely protect me and give me help for the successful execution of devotional service. This is called confidence. Okay. So this is very, very important that having confidence means faith is very, very important. That is, okay, the hoga. So the, Okay. No. So, Sadda is confident, firm faith that by remember rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna, one automatically perform all subsidiary activities. Such a faith is favorable to the discharge of devotional service. So, faith means conviction that the goal of life is to please Krishna and abandon all other desires. So, basically, three types of devotees while giving instruction to Sanatan Goswami. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu divided devotional service into three categories based on Sraddha. Sraddha one Janahoi, Bhakti Adhikari, Uttama Madhyama Kanishka, Sraddha Anusari. So one becomes qualified as a devotee according to the development of this Sraddha. So three types of devotees. Kanishna Madhyaman Kanishna is in the beginning stage. Okay. So we started with neophyte devotees. So neophyte devotees is Kanishna Bhagavad. Prakruta Bhakta or materialistic devotee does not purposefully study the Sastra, does not try to understand actually uh, standard of pure devotional service. So we also saw that what will happen with if you don't study Shastra. So sometimes people are not sincere in reading Shastra, then what will happen? They may reach to the point that they may leave Bhakti. So that's why reading Shastra is very, very important. But these people don't read Shastra or they read so many other literatures rather than Srila Prabhupada books. Okay, because if you don't read Shastra, then what happened? You will not be able to maintain the consciousness for service. 
okay so does not try to understand actual standard of pure devotion service without reading shastra how we can understand pure, uh, standard of pure devotion service does not so proper respect to advanced devotee even he, he consider that just lord and himself he then don't care about he doesn't care about other devotees so he may follow regulatory principle learn from his special master or from his family who worship the deity he is to be considered on the material path also he is trying to advance in devotional service such a person is bhakta praya neophyte devotee so kanishtha adhikari is characteristic so we discuss that how he judge the devotees based on material expertise for uh, consider the advancement in devotional service okay so he give more priorities to archana deity worship than bhajan i mean bhajan includes everything chanting sixteen rounds reading shastra attending bhagavad gita class attending morning program it's very very important so conscious of only deity in the temple he don't he, for him it is no respect for devotee and he thinks high of himself that is the problem so kanishtha adhikari is characteristic this type of madhyam devotee criticizes non devotee of the lord so i gave example of sila propad how he you know he criticizes he criticizes uh, one of the mayavadi and his uh, you know uh, i can give an example so there are so many mayavadi who consider themselves as god so propad has always criticized once upon a time you know uh, one uh, mayavadi was giving a lecture from the pla- high raised platform so before that propad has given a class so there are some uh, conference and all so spiritual conference so propad was invited and other mayavadis were invited so what happened that uh <clears throat> so first propad spoke then propad was not stopping on because he knew that and the next speaker is mayavadi is going to speak all nonsense things like we are god and all those things so mayavadi means what those who consider themselves as a god okay this material body is maya this both uh, material world is maya there is no difference between person and god after liberation so they themselves consider as a god so everything is one so pro so as soon as rupa lecture was over after that what happened that he came down and then he start another person started giving a lecture so then rupa thought that is speaking oh everything is one we are god you are god he is god so rupa told his disciple on the stage and bring that person down something he said and the devotees went there he started dancing on the stage they, they didn't let him speak so that was my worry so people may get, get disturbed by you know uh, devotees are doing like this thing but actually people don't have proper understanding of the philosophy so sometimes when people see this kind of thing they disturb so propad often criticizes so many materialistic scientists and one of his disciple was disturbed in lab purpose i cannot do anything what i cannot do on him then doesn't matter so that's the point a neophyte opens the demigod so we should not offend the demigod but we must respect the demigod that is very very important okay the and new pet duty does not appreciate the paraphernalia of the lord that also we saw okay so typically kanishtha adhikari is eager to engage his materialistic qualification in the service of the lord so we also saw what is the difference between pure devotional service and the nishkam karma yog okay so nishkam karma yog you like particular one activity 
let's say you are software engineer and you want to develop a but if i tell you to construct a temple oversee the construction of the temple you will not like to do that you say that my rules is in software so you serve the krishna only through software you connect with krishna through software i mean software services okay but pure devotion service duty unko bolenge ha ja ke temple banwao to isse se i'll do app banwao to okay ha i'll do go and do hari naam sankirtan he say yeah i'll do that is pure devotion service so there is a little difference but very important difference so typically the kanishtha adhikari is eager to engage his materialistic qualification in the service of the lord mistaking such a material expertise to be the sign of advanced devotion but by continuing to serve the supreme lord and the devotee engage in propagating the lord's mission the kanishtha adhikari also advances in his realization and comes to the stage of dedicating his activity to helping more advanced vishnu so that's why if you really want to advance in devotional service it's very very important to associate with the person who is advanced okay or uh, or assisting the devotees who is preaching on advanced level so that's very very important otherwise so that's why always you must have three, three kind of relationship that you know we should have high superiors who can chastise us always or correct us and guide us not only chastise us but can guide us correct us chastise us so that superiors and friends and uh, uh, we should have relationship with new comers also so that uh, you know, so that is very very important so we can speak the philosophy and everything okay so that's very very essential in the bhakti shravanam kirtan okay so by the association we can advance even such a kanishtha adhikari can help ordinary living entities but kanishtha adhikari can help non devotees or ordinary living entities by the association since at least kanishtha adhikari have faith that krishna is the supreme person of god so by continuing to serve the supreme lord and devotees we already discussed so kanishtha adhikari uh, kanishtha uh, devotee is angry or disturb if de- uh, non devotee is criticized so such a kanishtha adhikari therefore is disturb if people if a second class devotee criticizes the non devotee of the lord in the name of compassion or kindness a kanishtha adhikari approves of non uh, non devotional activities of such materialistic men because kanishtha adhikari is ignorant of the higher realm of devotional service and unlimited transcendental base of krishna consciousness this is devotional service merely as a religious aspect of life but thinks that life has many enjoyable and worthwhile non devotional once upon a time when sila prabhupad was in paris i recommend everyone of you to read uh, sila prabhupad lila amrit you will understand he is a person bhagavat so you may get more realization by reading him reading about him that when he was in the paris what happened that uh, room conference uh, room or something so the there are some protocols to meet with the mayor yes. so, so the devotees came and explained sila propad what is the protocol to meet the mayor <laughs> so as soon as mayor comes you no know, he has to stand up and uh, you know he should offer respect to him sila propad said yes 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 he will do i could not remember that thing but it is part i remember so you read that sila propad lila amrit so then you know as soon as mayor come propad didn't uh, didn't stand, stood up did not stand up and everyone was shocked that uh, everyone was shocked that 
what happened and then mayor was also strong so then then later on when proper after some time he stood up and made them realize that if the mayor is meditator and he is engaged in all kind of sinful activity like meditating gambling illicit sex intoxication and all then proper said why should i respect means he was not disrespecting but why should i give him so much importance Although he is a influential person, so I am not encouraging all of you to do that. Okay, but Prabhupada didn't care for that. Means he wanted to teach a lesson to devotees. It's not that he was disrespectful, respectful to mayors, but he wanted to teach the lesson to devotees that the highest subject person, person of Godhead and his devotees, they are very very important. So not this. Are doing sinful activities and all. So this is what connected. Once a time, uh, what happened that uh, uh, there was a temple opening in Amsterdam. So uh, so funny thing happened in Amsterdam that Rupa just told them how to open the temple. He said that please bring the flowers. Just bring the fruits for the yagya and all those things. So devotees brought flowers and fruits and everything. So next day the yagya was about to start. So Sila Prabhupada asked, "Where are the fruits?" So no fruits were there, no flower were there in the yagya place where yagya was going to happen. And uh, so what happened that then Prabhupada asked devotee, "Where is the fruits? I told you to bring the fruits." He said, "Devotee said, fruits are gone for food salad." Then Shubha the becomes so angry. Now you may have surprised why he is becoming angry. You see that now. So then he asked the flowers. <laughs> so devotees are uh, such a devotee that they made flower rice. Okay, so they made a rice with the flower flowers flavor. So then, Prabhupada becomes so angry, and all the news reporters and everyone there, newspaper and news reporters and all media, so Prabhupada started chastising the devotees in front of media only, and you know media people were shocked. See, okay, then you know Prabhupada somehow he installed the deities, then he went inside the room, and there was one devotee. He was. Very very excited to know what Rupad is going to do in his room after such a long deity opening ceremony. So he went inside the room, then he was seeing Rupad's activity through one hole from the door. So as soon as Rupad entered inside, he put the soul aside. He was so sitting calmly and he was laughing. You know? So then devotee concluded that Rupad. Didn't care for medias. To correct his duty, didn't even care for media. So sometimes, no, Madhya Pradeshari and Uttar Pradeshari, sorry, Madhya Pradeshari duty chest tries to correct the mistakes of new duties or materialistic. I am not telling that we should do that. Okay, so that's pro. Uh, then you know. Uh, he was laughing. So personally, he was happy that deity installation. Was... But the same time, it's a correct devotee, so that you know they doesn't make they don't make a mistake. And he was peaceful inside. He didn't care for media to correct his disciples. So seeing sometimes such a behavior of the devotees, people may get disturbed. People. Major disturb, but that's why it is said we should not judge the devotees by external behaviors. That's what it is said in Nectar of Instruction. Krishna ki esse trikam sorry, not that. Krishna swabhava janitir vapuchas se doshe na prakut tamiha bhakta jana se pashir Ganga ambasam buddha buddha phena pankhe Brahma dravata pagarsh niradharma. In Nectar of Instruction, verse number six, 
being situated in his original Krishna conscious position, a pure devotee does not identify with the body. Such a devotee should not be seen from the materialistic point of view. Indeed, one should overlook a devotee having a body born in low family, a body with bad complexion, a deformed body. Very, very important. Or disease or informed body. So we should not judge the activities of devotees. Why? Because this way we may end up in offense. Okay. So why why we see the devotees on material point of view? So the Kahavata Jaisi Krishna Vaisi Krishna. Since we are at the material platform, what happened? We are even the devotees who are at not material platform. They are at the spiritual platform. But since we are at the material platform, we are seeing the devotees who is that spiritual platform at material platform. So we see the devotee who is spiritually elevated. We see him as a material perspective. That's our problem, not the other devotee's problem. Okay, so according to ordinary vision, such imperfection may seem prominent in the body of pure devotee. But despite such a seeming defect, the body of pure devotee cannot be polluted. Okay. It is exactly like water of the Ganges, which sometimes during the rainy season are full of bubbles, foam, and mud. The Ganges water do not become polluted. So those who are advanced in spiritual understanding will bathe in Gangas without considering the condition of water. So this is the thing. So sometimes uh, uh, we see some weird behavior of the devotee. We should, we should not judge them by their external behavior. Okay. So let's move ahead. Otherwise, these are the topic we can go on here only. So this is uh, <clears throat> so non-devotees, the Rikanishtha devotees is angry or disturbed, non-devotees criticize. Sometimes that even the Madhya Madhikari criticize Cheshta is new uh, newcomers sometimes Kanishtha Dikari get Okay. So in the name of compassion, what do they do? Uh, Kanishtha Dikari approves of non-devotional activities of such materialist people. Okay. So because the Kanishtha is radically ignorant of higher realm of devotional service and the ultimate transcendental base of Krishna consciousness, he sees devotional service merely as a religious aspect of life, but thinks that life has many enjoyable and worth it. Still, he is at material platform. So, if such a materialistic beauty follows the rules and regulation of beauty worship, they will gradually be elevated to higher standards. They have to, what, what should they do by for advancing in devotional service? They have to Continue practicing devotional service. Okay. And eventually become pure devotees of the Lord. So unless they commit the offense against other devotee, so they should not commit the offense. As soon as we commit the offense, our advancement will be stagnant. So slope should be is my ten theta should be infinite. Sorry, the slope should be uh, divided by dx should be infinite. Okay, that is mathematical term. Slope should be infinite. Rate of change of advancement positively should be infinite. Velocity should be infinite, I should say. Velocity of advancement should be infinite. But uh, that depends on how What are the terms and conditions that we should not commit the offense? Okay. So in such a case, what will happen that advancement will be checked. Okay. So be conscious that God is everywhere, not only in the temple. So we should consider that in the heart of the devotee, there is a God. God. So in the form of Paramatma. So Madhvacharya says that one in the lowest stage of devotional service faithfully worship the deity in the temple, but is not aware that Supreme Person God is actually all pervading. That's what we had discussed in Bhagavad Gita. 
अहम सर्वस्य प्रभव मत सर्व सर्व प्रवर्तते इति मत्वा भजन्ते मां बुद्धा भावम समलिता कृष्ण एवरीथिंग एमेनेट्स एंड ही इज एवरीवेयर सो बाय नोइंग व्हिच इति मत्वा भजन्ते मां बुद्धा भावम समलिता द वन हु आर इंटेलिजेंट बाय नोइंग दिस ही वर्शिप लॉर्ड कृष्ण so this same mentality can be seen in the western country okay so so where people commit all type of sinful activities in their home in the street but then piously go to the church and pray to god for mercy so actually god is in our home god is in the street god is in our office god is in the forest god is everywhere and therefore god should be worshiped everywhere by the process of devotional service that is not as it now the question come that god is everywhere then why should i go to temple so then we can say in the monsoon just pass water is everywhere then why only the water from the pot not drinking the water from everywhere okay why not drinking the water from ocean so god is everywhere but we are not able to access him with our uh, material eyes so we have to go to the place through where there is the interfacing layer so we can see the god okay but we have okay we are not able to see that is different thing but we must have understanding that god is everywhere. that's important point okay Uh, Kanishka devotee offers demigod. A devotee of the Lord should not misinterpret Bhagavad Gita's injections against demigod worship as license to offend the demigod. So, what is it said in Bhagavad Gita? Uh, if you remember seventh chapter, Kamsha karma siddhi ajanti hi devata kamesh teshte nitya jnana prapad jnanti anya devata. पर्टिक्युलर रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन ऑफ वर्शिप अकॉर्डिंग टू दिन नेचर ओके सो नेक्स्ट वर्स इज से and krishna in everyone's heart has the super soul as the super soul as soon as one desire to worship some demigod he said that he makes his faith steady so that he can devote himself to the particular deity and what he says that by his endowed with such a faith he endeavors to worship particular demigod and obtain his desire but actually is benefits so by krishna only. The next verse he says, "Antamanto phalam te sam tad bhavati alpamed sam devan devi jayanti mad bhakta yanti mau." So men of small intelligence worship the demigod; their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods of the go uh, go to the planet of demigods, but my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet. So similar instructions are given in ninth chapter. So nowhere Krishna has said that you should offend the devil gods. He said those who worship devil gods are less intelligent, or his intelligence is stolen. So intelligence is stolen, so थोड़ा कम हो गया इसलिए less intelligent. So basically he has no understanding. Okay. So we should not misinterpret this instruction of Bhagavad Gita. Okay, uh, to offend the demigods who are bona fide Vaishnava. These demigods are bona fide Vaishnava. Sila Madhvajare states, "Tad bhakta nam upeksha ka kuriyur Vaishnava apni dvesham." So those who neglect or so indifference to the devotees of the Lord are to be considered offenders at the lotus feet of Vishnu. So repeating again. To those who neglect or so, those who neglect or so indifference 
the devotees of the Lord are to be considered offender in the lotus feet of Vishnu. So, you know that story of Duruvasa. Okay, of course it's not. Similarly, those who disrespect the demigods, you know the story of Duruva, someone who offended uh, Ambaris Maharaj, right? So, Ambaris Maharaj uh, was observing the fast of Ekadasi, and at the time of breaking the fast, Duruva Samun is approaching. So, Duruva Samun said that I am going for bath, and after the coming, I will take lunch or whatever, prasad. So, Ambaris Maharaj said yes. So, Dhruvasa Muni was uh, so, taking so much time in bath. And uh, time Muruta was passing for breaking the fast. So, Ambaris Maharaj was not understanding. Then he consulted with the Brahmana what he should do. So, we should learn, although the Ambaris Maharaj was advanced devotee, still he is consulting with Brahmanas what he should do. The Brahmana says, you can take water. Okay. Uh, so that, I think he said, Tulsiliv, I forgot. But water, he definitely said that that is as good as uh, eating and non-eating. Okay. Breaking the fast and not breaking the fast. So if to Gendruva Samani, by his mystic power, he came to know about the situation. So then he came so fast, he became so angry. So he was, said, you know, you forget to respect Atithi. Atithi means one who comes without calling at home. That is called Atithi. So then Dhruva Samani, by his mystic power, he produced one dem demon to kill. Ambaris Maharaj. So as soon as he created demon, Lord Vishnu released the Sudarshan. And Sudarshan killed that demon. And he started chastising uh, Durva Samuni. So Durva Samuni travel all over the places, heaven, Janalok, Tapalok, Mahalok. He even went to Vaikuntha. And in Vaikuntha, he fall at the feet of lotus feet of Vishnu. Fall at the lotus feet of Vishnu. He asked Vishnu, that uh, no, please tell Sudarshan not to chase him. So he says, Lord Vishnu says that Sudarshan is not in my control, he's in the control of Dhruva, sorry, Ambarish Maharaj. So you should go and ask the forgiveness of Ambarish Maharaj. Then only it is Sudarshan will uh, relieve you. So then Ambarish, sorry, Dhruva Samuni ran fast and touched the lotus feet of Ambarish Maharaj. And Sudarshan Chakra. Then, that's the story. We should not offend. Okay. So, those who neglect or show indifference, okay. Similarly, those who disrespect the demigods will become bereft of devotional service and be forced to rotate again and again within the samsara. Cycle of birth and death. Pujya Devas Tatha Sada. The demigods are always to be offered respect since they are devotee of the Supreme Person of Godhead. Someone is envious of the demigods, he is to be considered envious of the Supreme Person of Godhead. Okay, so this is the instruction. So, Kanishtra devotee cannot appreciate Lord's paraphernalia. So, according to Sula Bhakti, Siddhant Sahit Thakur, inability of the Sandhya Sandhya indicates that such a materialistic Vaishnava is still affected by the speculative understanding of the Karmavadi and Mayavadis. So those who are dedicated to sense gratification, the impersonal speculation about this. So this kind of devotees are considered at the level of Karmavadi and Mayavadis. Okay. So Kanishtra devotee cannot appreciate Lord's paraphernalia. Sila Prabhupada often said that only the impersonal desire to see Krishna alone. So you remember in the definition of pure devotional service, what is the definition of pure devotional service? Unya Bilasita Sunyam. 
ಧ್ಯಾನ ಕರ್ಮಾದಿ ಅನಾವೃತ್ತಮ್ ಅನುಕೂಲ್ಯನ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅನುಶೀಲನ ಭಕ್ತಿರುತ್ತಮ ಸೊ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅನುಕೂಲ್ಯನ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅನುಶೀಲನ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಎಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸನ್ ಲೈಕ್ ನರ್ಸಿ ವಾಮನ್ ವರಹ ಒನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಓಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಾಫೆಮಿಲಿಯ okay so so impersonalists want to see the krishna alone but krishna is always with bhakta just like you no know, what make krishna difference from narayan lila madhuri venu madhuri roop madhuri and bhakta madhuri is always with the devotees so that's why krishna is there are devotees that to krishna katha so krishna always stay there So we desire to see Krishna with his cows, his friends, his parents, his gopis, his fluid, jewelry, forest, scenery and so on. Krishna is Georgius in the setting of Vrindavan. It is in the land of Vrindavan that Lord Krishna is surrounded by so many beautiful associates. Manifest is exalted in describable beauty. Similarly, the unique mercy of the Supreme Person of God is Godhead is exhibited in his activity of his pure devotees who selflessly travel around the universe distributing the dust particle from krishna's lotus feet on the head of conditioned souls okay so one who is uninterested in lord's prayer can only so we should be very very respectful one of the aspect will come in 64 angas of bhakti that we should ready to receive the garlands of the lord and we should not discuss, we should be very careful is holiness gopal krishna goswami uh, if someone goes to receive him at, at the airport and they go with the garland so if flower petal falls he immediately tells devotee to pick up those flower petals because that garland is worn by the lord so it is not different it's a paraphernalia of the lord it's a prasad of the lord so how can we step over on the on that our petals okay so so those all the flower petals are considered as a dust particle from krishna's lotus feet okay so one who is uninterested in the lord's paraphernalia and to the gen devotee has stand stunted conception of supreme person of god this must be due to the contamination from impersonal and sensuous understanding of life okay so actually there are those those are famous speculators especially you know scientists and all even after the coming to bhakti they don't like to stay with so many devotees they like to stay alone and all okay so now what is the difference between arshan and bhajan So, Silla Bhakti Siddha and Sarit Thakur has given a nice explanation of the difference between Archana and Bhajan. So, Archana refers to the platform of Sadhana Bhakti in which one serves the Lord to carry out the rules and regulation of the process. So, he, and one who has achieved the center of the Lord's holy name and is totally engaged in the attempt to serve the Lord should be considered on the platform of Bhajan. So, one is just focused on deity, uh, deity worship. Other is for him deity worship is important but the other aspects are also very important like bhagavat reading chanting hearing okay so all those things even though his external activity may sometimes be less it was you can uh, accept any negligence so sometimes the pujari you may found where they are very strict and sometimes those who are not pujari think they are lenient okay but uh, those who are not little bit lenient we should not judge them are ye to lenient lenient hai okay so uh, and uh, sometimes this those are pujari and all they have such a to offhand this uh, vishnavas who are doing you know, sadhan bhajan like hearing hearing and all the offhand 
but that should not be the case. Both. So both are very important. This should not neglect. So that was the intermediate devotee. Sorry, that was finished as devotee. Now we are at the stage of Madhyamadhikari, intermediate devotee. So any question in Kanishka Adhikari? If you have any question in Kanishka Adhikari, please. So this is what we saw. The neophyte or third class devotee is one whose faith is not strong and who at the same time does not recognize the decision of revealed scripture. Okay, they cannot understand the decision of the revealed scripture. The neophyte's faith can be changed by someone with a strong argument or by an opposite decision. So unlike the second class devotee who also can put forward arguments, so, so further classification of devotee devotees, neophyte devotees made in Bhagavad Gita. It is stated that there are four classes of men, namely those who are distressed, those who are in the need of money. So these are four categories. Chaturvida Bhajan Temam, Jana Sukruti Narasana, Artho Artati Jigyasu, Gyanisya Bharasar Sabha. Okay, so, so these are also called, they are beginners. It is said in Bhagavad Gita, they are beginner. So, if you could remember, seventh chapter, verse number sixteen. Begin, begin is the word. To render devotional service unto me, a distress. The desire of wealth, the inquisitive, so still they have material conception of life. And who is searching for the knowledge of absolute truth? Even the Prabhupada has quoted here. Okay. So, and who are wise? Begin devotional service and come to the Lord for relief in the matter of the respective self satisfaction. They go into some place of worship and pray to God for my aggression of material distress or for some economic development or to satisfy their inquisitiveness. And a wise man who simply realized the greatness of God is also counted among the neophyte. That's why in a, in a due course of time, in the, in the after subsequent verses, Krishna gave a conclusion that Okay, uh, he says that of this one who is in full knowledge <coughs> and is always engaged in pure devotional service, based. He is in full knowledge, he is always engaged in pure devotional service. <laughs> So, bhakti should always be performed. So, we saw anushilana. So, always be engaged in performing devotional studies by following the footsteps. So, if you are not always en being engaged, that is not called, that is not pure devotional service. So that's what Krishna gives the conclusion. Who is in full knowledge, who is always engaged in pure devotional service is the best. 
then he says that all these devotees are undoubtedly magnanimous one but he who is situated in the knowledge of me i consider to be just like my own self the being engaged in my transcendental service is sure to attain me the highest most perfect goal then after he says that after many many births he who is actually in knowledge surrender unto me knowing me to be the cause of all causes all that is such a great story is there so okay similar thing is given in bhagavad gita okay rupa so, says an example of neophyte devotee classes dhruv maharaj he was in the need of father's kingdom and therefore engaged in certain devotional service to the lord so then in the end when he was completely purified he declined to accept any material benediction from the lord so finally he was purified so he had become adva- at advanced stage similarly gajendra was distressed and prayed for krishna for protection so dhru maharaj was in the want of kingdom money arthat arthato gajendra was uh, artho he was life was in danger so after that he became pure devotee and which are the other example artho arthati jigyasu okay so similarly sana sanak sanatan sanan and sanat kumar were all in category of wise saintly person and they are all attracted by devotional service so these rishis were just jigyasu similarly things happened to uh, to the assembly in the nemisharan of forest headed by sage sana so this sages were in- inquisitive and were always asking sri goswami about krishna so they were inquisitive may not necessarily they follow but they were inquiring okay so there are four categories as mentioned in bhagavad gita so their example is given here so thus they achieve the association of pure devotees and become pure devotees themselves if you see uh, sanat sanatan and all they went to vaikuntha and they just got a smell of the tulsi leaf okay, that comes in ninth chapter somewhere in bhagavad gita purport 9.2 so simply by the lord says patram pushpam phalam toyam he is ready to accept from the devotee any kind of offering never mind what even a leaf water a leaf flower a bit of fruit a little what which are all available in every part of the world can be offered by any person okay regardless of social position um, and will be accepted if offered with the love there are many instances in the history simply by tasting the tulsi leaves offered to the lotus feet of the lord the great sages like sanat sanat kumar became great devotee so paraphernalia you no know, smelling flower we should will which will come in 64 angas of bhakti therefore the devotion service is very nice and it can be engaged in happy mood god accept only the love with which things are offered to him okay so that is how this so is the real man thus they achieve the association of pure devotee and become pure devotee themselves so dhru maharaj got the association of narad muni so then that way they, they gradually advance sanat then gajendra just he offered the flower and vishnu immediately came and rishis of nemisharanya they got the association of sutta goswami who has heard the shrimad bhagavatam from sukhdev goswami when he was narrated 
ಸಿಂಗ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಉಂಟು ಪರಿಚಿತ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಕಂಡೀಶನ್ ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅಸ್ಟೆಡ್ಟಿ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ಟು ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ Okay, so this, so these four types of devotee have been described in seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, and they have all been accepted as pious. So they are pious, but they are not advanced. See, there are two things. One is senior devotee. So he had spent lot of time in bhakti, but doesn't mean that he is advanced. But, but senior means generally we should take it as advanced. But nowadays senior means we just consider that they have spent more time in bhakti so that's why they are senior senior as per this lifetime okay senior as per this lifetime but we don't know who has begun their bhakti when so maybe the new uh, new uh, little boy who is chanting hare krishna might be advanced than us we don't know so someone may be senior in a in spending the times in bhakti. spending the times in bhakti this lifetime but he does not require that in his advance so there is a difference between senior and being in advance okay so senior should be advance but if they are not advance it is different thing they may not be advance that is different thing. so so without becoming pious one no one can come to the devotional service it is explained that in bhagavad gita that only one who has continually executed pious activity and whose sinful reaction in life has been completely stopped can take to krishna consciousness esam tantagatam papam jananam punya karmanam te dandu mohate dandu anih mud mukto bhajanti mam dhrana gata ani kale asle So that is what he says person who have acted pious in previous life and in this life and those who sinful actions are completely eradicated are freed from dualities of delusion and they engage themselves in my service with detail but this has is in bhagavad gita what he says in 66 sarva dharman paritajya mam ekam sarvam rajah ham tum sarva pape bhi moksha swami master abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to me i shall deliver you from all sinful reaction do not fear <coughs> so even if you are not free from sinful desire sinful activity you just accept the krishna krishna will free you from all sinful reaction then your devotion service will begin so others can so only those sinful reaction is gone and those who are pious they can only perform bhakti the new fight devotees are classified into four groups the distressed those in need of money inquisitive and wise so according to the gradation of their pious activity without pious activity if man is distressed condition will become an anushit without pious activity if man is in distress condition he becomes agnostic or communist or some some thing like that so you may i don't want to come and speak on the online session because sometime video go viral because he does not humbly believe in god he thinks that he can adjust his distress condition by totally uh, disbelieving in god okay so that is one thing so lord krishna have raised that explain in gita that out of those four type of neophytes the one who is wise is very dear to him because a wise man if he is attached to krishna is not seeking an exchange for material benefit okay he does not ask anything in return Pralad Maharaj finally Dhruv Maharaj didn't ask anything. 
a wise man who become attached to Krishna does not want any any return from him, either in the form of his relieving his distress or in in gaining money. So this means that from the very beginning, this basic principle of attachment to Krishna is more or less love. Okay, so another how we can advance is yes, to study scripture and all. Anyway, we study for many, many births. We consider that Krishna is everything, origin of everything. Therefore, speak to the lotus feet of Krishna and gradually develop love. Although such a wise man is very dear to Krishna, the others are also accepted as very magnanimous because even though they are distressed or in the need of money, they have come to the Krishna verse with his Thus, they are accepted as liberal or broad-minded part. So, without being elevated to the Supreme Parsadi. So, one has to become Gyani. At least he should have understanding that who is Supreme. Without that, he cannot worship. Okay, so the less intelligent or those whose intelligence has been taken away by spell of Maya are attached to different demigods on account of this also we saw. So that's why the wise man who has thoroughly understood that is he is spiritual and not simply body. Because he realized that his spirit and Krishna is the supreme spirit, knows that his intimate relationship is with Krishna, not with the body. So, so Jnani has knowledge. Yeah. One has to come to the stage of Jnani. At least he should have some knowledge that Krishna is the supreme person in God. Okay. So, it can be concluded that a person who is freed from the bodily concept of life is eligible candidate for pure devotional service. Basically, at least he has to accept he has a uh, jnana that Krishna is everything. Okay, so jnana he must have. So he can come to the, if he is free from the bodily conception of life, then he is eligible candidate for two devotion service. It is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita that after Brahman realization, when one is free from material anxiety and can see every living entity as equal level, is eligible to enter into the devotional service. Devotional service comes after Brahman realization, even after Jnana Shri. That's what it is says, Bahunam Janmana Mante, Gyanman Mam Prapadate, Vasudevam Sarvamiti, Samhatma Chutla. So, okay. So we'll stop here. Tomorrow we'll discuss about uh, Madhyam Adhikari and Uttam Adhikari. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.